Hi, welcome to another video by Daniel and John. Um, we're on the Vito van W639 and we need to replace the water pump. It's been in here original. Uh, we're going to replace the thermostat and a couple of pulleys. Now, to get to all of this, it's hidden away by there. So, in essence, we need to take all of this off, including the bumper and the lights. So, the first step is to take this plastic trim off and the lights out and the bumper off. And that's our first step. So I'll show you what tools you need to do that. Should we show them what parts we've got as well after yeah. the tools? Yeah. So we'll just show you the parts we've got first. So we've got, they're not like super expensive parts or anything. And so, this is the water pump. Now probably with the original ones, they have plastic uh, impellers there and they fail. It comes with a set of new gaskets, which is nice. But also while we're in there, we're gonna swap that thermostat out. See the thermostat is in there. Come, the thermostat comes in the housing. It's a sealed unit, it's a housing, so we have got a lot of choice there. And while we're in there, we're just going to place one or two pulleys. So uh, that's, the, that's the tensioner for the drive belt, and these yeah. other pulleys go on the left and the, the top. Yeah, so uh, we're going to do all that. We'll place them as well. Uh, we'll change the coolant. Change the uh, coolant, yeah. Coolant's about 10 litres, if anybody's interested. So, so we were showing them tools, weren't we, to start with, so yeah. You're definitely going to need a uh, ratchet or spanners, I'll show you what that, and the sockets you're going to need are a 10mm and a 13mm, and ideally a bit of a bar to lever, and I'll show you why in a minute. You'll need two of these Torx heads, one is T27, and one is T20. So and this is just to remove this, this trim. bump. So what John's talking about is things like this, these little little bolts, so, basically. Oh, and a posi drive. Phillips, Phillips yeah. Got. So the uh, Tiddler, which is the T20 you need for these. I've already loosened them off so we yep. can see. There's one, two, three. The T27 you need for these there there's one two they're identical each side yeah so that's those torx bits little 10 mil there by the oh, looks of it yeah. we will obviously take the air box and everything off as well yeah 10 mil for those yeah then the top ones a 13 this is why you need a bit of leverage what i have done is sprayed some wd-40 down there before i've moved these so this is the 13 so you just loosen them all off so there's two that side, two that side, there's two of those 10 And mils. obviously there's one on the light as well. Yeah. Which Little 10 mil, yeah. I think so we already said that. That one there. And that'll be our first step of uh, removing this front end and getting to the water pump and we'll come back to you. So we're going to film this video in various parts because there's a lot to it and we'll show you all the tools and things we're going to need. There's a few little, I think there's a few little tips and tricks, especially, especially with the viscous fan clutch, getting the fan off and so things like that. add on to this bit. So we yeah. need to move this air box. So to do that, slide the oil filler out. And then there's two like push things there. Pull We've had this out. on and off in the past oh, on previous time. videos. It will come out. And then it clips in the back there. Just come just round. So pull it up, just watch your thing, and just pull it away. So you've got your math sensor wire there, and yeah. you've got your air there. And then what we'll do, we'll just disconnect those in a minute. That one there, that one there, and we'll just pull that off there and we'll actually lift this out of the vehicle yeah. and we'll undo this as well. We haven't actually done this job before, but it's probably not that difficult, but we'll just we'll just show you each part of it in case you are thinking of doing it yourself. Yeah, because there'll be nothing worse than getting started just realise you have those little things to get those. But what out. we're planning on doing is we are planning on removing quite a lot of this front section so we can get proper access because there's nothing worse than doing the job and not being able to yeah. get to stuff if it's tight or it's not been off in years. Yeah. It's all original. Um, I'm replacing it. It hasn't failed, but it's done 180,000 miles. And the, the what I'm going to use the vehicle for, I want it to be ultra reliable. And this is one of those things. If it does fail, it can't be fixed on the side of the road. It probably takes five to six hours to uh, do mess about clean up. And yeah. Anyway, we'll come back to you when we've moved on a bit. Okay. Right, welcome out. So we're still taking this bumper off. Now hidden here. There's obviously the front wheels. There's a torque under there. 
and that is that T20. There's one on each side. And what you do, you pull this little tab back there. So let's have that out. These are hidden away. So then I'll show you what else you need to drop. And then you've virtually got the front off. So you can take your lights out. So there it is there. That was a T20. It's two of them. And that's my car. You've got a wood screw at the front. Yeah, someone put a wood screw on the driver's side going up, which is not ideal because which it can... It should be. Let me show that. But because if it falls out and goes in the front tyre, you get a puncture. Yeah. But whatever. Right, so what other stuff have we... What other stuff have we removed? Let me show that. Yep. So you here. So John's removed a couple of more Torx bolts from here. And here, obviously yeah. things are starting to come off now. That's those there. There's They're quite big ones. Off. And that was, it's the same torque again. It's the T27. So it's all it's all T20, T27 torque yeah. bits for the bump and everything. Uh, just top tip, just uh, get a little bag and put your bits in, it does help. You might need a little wire brush and a bit of sort of like WD-40 or um, whatever we've got laying around or something like that, liquid molly, just to get on things that haven't been off in a few years rather than rounding things off or breaking things. So this this is coming loose now and it's got like little locators. Obviously replace that. So if you've lost that and you've got that, just get some self tappers. Yeah, a self tapper with a wash on or something would do that. Bennett's somewhere like that. Yeah. They're very helpful company. Right. right, so we haven't done this before, so this is all new to us. Um, so it's a matter of getting this bumper off. So, so it's not too heavy. So There might be something else holding it over on on the yeah, other side. Let's drop that side. So what we'll do is we'll put it down for a minute. So and you then see what's happened to us, we've released one side that's dropped. Right, okay. So what happens is here you can see there's a slide there, there's a slide there. That thing there. So once you've taken those two screws out, it goes in here. It slides forward. So when you put it back. So it can it slide it forward and it will keep it there while you yeah. put the screws in. That's quite a good design actually. Yeah, it is. Right, so that's the bumper off. So we will take this away. Hi, welcome back. So Front bumpers off and all the grill. That's the way. And now's the lights. Now it's a 10 mil socket again, and there's three. One there. I've already taken those out earlier on. One there. One hidden below down there. So let's have that out. So it's all 10 mil on this light, which is nice. I'll just show you what this looks like. So you got it. Obviously without the bumper on it looks like that. So John's, as he said, he's going to take the lights take out. out. It will be the same process for the other side. What's interesting about this light is it looks like the uh, lens open up. Potentially. Yeah. And I've got a bit of misting there so You could open it up me. and see it. We might do a video on that though yeah. itself actually. If, if, if that is what I you can do. A bit of and was, uh, yeah. Yeah, just put a bit more sealant in there. At the moment, this light is still held in place by the wiring at the back. Yeah, the so the wiring's, the wiring's at the back here, this connector. It's a multi-plug, so it should it should come off relatively yeah. easily. Once you loosen that, and the reason I'm just giving me basically a safety harness, I guess. So. Ah, hang on a minute. There's always another. Yep. Now. Well, I'll come round here and film another, that then. Here, there. So what we've got here is so hidden out of the way. Another 10 mil. So this is why you've got to get this. Uh, so you can't off. really remove the lights unless you remove the like front bumper part because there's there's a, a 10 mil bolt there, but there's also like one round here and that obscures it. I'll tell you what, if you just wanted to replace your lights on this, that's quite a bit of work, isn't it, to get these out? Yeah. So if you release that, you can now get to 
and this is actually loose at the back of this cover. This is probably why we're getting why condensation we, yeah, in it because yeah, somebody's sense. tried to, somebody's replaced the bulb and not wanted to take a lot of things off. Yeah, so that might be a simple so. check just to get that on better oh, if, you, if you're having yeah. the same misting problem. There's a connector there. Little, there's a little, little tab in there. Tab you push. So what we'll do is we'll get this light off, get that off, and then we'll show you the next bit. Right, welcome back. So we've got the four bolts out of the headlight, and the hardest bit so far is getting these uh, light connectors out. Now they do have a bit of a cover over them. I've watched a couple of other videos on about wiggling it forward and doing all this sort of thing. But you see that there, that purple bit, you can see it. That hole. That slides over that. Now, if somebody's been there before... That's really rough, isn't it, there? Yeah, it's very difficult to get out. The only way that we found to get... And we, we spent a bit of time trying to do it, is just to remove this bit of plastic here. Don't matter, we wiggled it, we were delicate with it, it just wouldn't move. And then we just pushed that back and pushed that down and pulled it off. Yeah. But believe it or not, you need a couple of people to do this because you need to take the light out to access that. So and hold it and then wiggle it, it, yeah. So we'll put that back and we'll repair it with a small plastic patch and some JB plastic well, so it's nice. But that was just a pain, that. Yeah. Right, we'll come back to you in a bit. Right, there's some pipes we need to remove. Because um, what we're going to do is we're going to take these bolts off here this metal brace that comes across and the crush cans at the front there's one here and three three bolts down the side um, that's the same each side but opposite I'd say one is 10 mil on there oh, and the others are 16 yeah on they the start going up in size so obviously what it is we're taking this intake hose off just off the bottom there with a jubilee clip and John's going to look at taking some of these radiator hoses so off. Take that off so we can pull this forward yeah yeah. So what is on there at the moment? A spring clip. Yeah. So uh, if you yeah. can use mole grips and things like that. Or seven mil socket. But you might want to invest in this tool. It basically goes on onto it like that, and, you, and then you grip it with that, and it locks, and then you can pull it off safely because they are on there tight. So John's removing the. Intake for the turbo. So it's all Jubilee clips. Get that in there, so that's off. So, because basically we need to take this whole front front section forward, and there's a lot of stuff still attached. Some of these hoses, like this, they can stay on. This little one's got to come off. So we will need to take this one off here. Now, if you go down, look under the van, you'll see that I've got a container under there. So we've got yeah. Basically, it's the it's an oil pan to catch the right uh, coolant, yeah. So we're going to drain the coolant in a minute. These, uh, so you've just got no normal Jubilee clips on. It normally is 7 mil. he says. But sometimes they're 8. There we go. Sometimes it's easy to undo them with a flathead screwdriver, but to do them up sometimes it's easier to use a ratchet. So you've got your, you've got your radiator here. Got your intercooler at the bottom, and there's a service via them real big pipes down there. You've got a little cooler here, which sort of just clips in, comes around here. It's on these plastic clips on the coolant radiator, and this is on here, so there's enough play in that. So yeah. we'll, we'll probably just take that off and run you it round. See now, a bit of light in there where I've loosened that hose, so I'm going to have a bit of a. So I just need to make sure I'm in position correctly with that. So, remember it's about 10 litres in this, so bear that in mind. So we'll try and film this the best we can, but obviously there's quite a lot of stuff in the way. Can't really get to it there. The other thing is, you've got to bear in mind these haven't probably ever been off. So some hoses have Jubilee clips on them, and some have the spring clips. I would recommend replacing these uh, spring clips, these old rusty spring clips, with Jubilee clips, like, like here. There's a Jubilee clip there. Right, here we go. But then that's not. So. Christ, that's a lot of coolant. Right, 
Right, so that oil pan has caught all of that. Obviously you can release this as well, yeah. let a bit of pressure out. So that's that bit done. So that's from the pump basically down there. Yeah. And then we can then release some things so like this from the top. The only thing that I'd suggest if I was doing that again, just looking where the alternator is, is to just protect it with a rag. You can just see here. Yeah. So we was just fortunately that's gone to the top end. But we there is a little um red screw down the bottom there. Right down the bottom there. You can also let it out by that, but we just want to get it out and done and we want to start disconnecting stuff. That's why we've just ploughed on and done that. Yeah, I mean the, the red screw is to bleed and take yeah. you know, just the fluid, but we've got to move this all forward. Yeah, we so need to take this whole this. whole bumper for whole bump assembly right, forward. So the next bit we've got to do is remove that, isn't it? So we'll just show show this bit with this tool. So I would you can do pliers and mole grips, but vice grips, but this is um, you see it's got a bit uh, there that goes on there and that goes on there and it just locks in. This is a laser tool. Sometimes these can be in a really awkward position. Yeah. What you've got to do is make sure you've got it. Kind of got to get it right in the first place, yeah. Make sure you've got it that thing on, on there the, and properly on, there. on it. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, and that'll lock that actual. And so when thing. you just squeeze it, and you can then hold this and move it back. But that's probably been on there for ages, so it won't come been off. Been on there a few years. So sometimes. So what we'll do is we'll do get we'll get all these pipes off, and then we'll come back to you in the next bit. Right. So we've got the bolts removed. The 13 is here, and these are all 16, and there's also a hidden one underneath there. Oh, it, you have to undo it from the other side. I can show. There you go. So, you need a bit of a breaker bar to get it out, but it's, it's there. Now, on this side, you've got limited space. So you can get it, you can loosen it so far with the socket, which is great, and then you'll need a 16mm spanner to take it out. Because if you try and take it all the way out, you'll get locked in there with this. Yeah. Just a word of warning, that's all, yeah. So that's all the bolts out this side. And then uh, we've just got these top ones here. Uh, there is a little little connector there that goes on the side of the intercooler. Which is um, it's just, there, it? just goes there. I'll show you that. There it goes there, that little thing. And obviously there's the horn as well. The horn bolts round here somewhere and we've just um, popped up. We've popped up round here so I can't see where it's it is. There. Bolts on there. Yeah, bolts on as John says it bolts on there. It's a 13 yeah. yeah. So what we'll do is we'll get them undone and then we'll move the whole thing forward. So all the bolts are off as you can see the front bumper assembly off the metal thing. Um, you don't need to touch this coolant pipe because it's on this bottom rail. So just take it off there. And the only things we did have to do is we had to take the bonnet lever off. We just pulled it, pulled that out. Yeah, you literally, you see what I mean on the bonnet lever, you push it tight, pull this blue thing out and then pop that out. And then when we uh, pulled in this coolant pipe out, we just had it, had it at an angle and was very carefully, careful, just, just pulled it all off. So this is the whole, as you can see, you can get to it now. You can just rest it below, but we just want it out of the way. I think we'll just put a cable tie on this and keep it safe. Yeah. I'll just show you what the thing actually looks like. So the whole thing comes off. We've obviously disconnected everything. That's the whole thing there. Um, doesn't weigh too much. Probably two-person job. You can manage it yourself if you're strong, but yeah. And that's it there. So... Now we'll just tidy a few bits up, sort of thing, and then we'll look at getting this uh, probably drive belt off next, fan off, and the water pump is actually the water pump is is behind the fan. It's here, and it runs here. So we'll show that in a minute. So I'm going to be careful with this. 
I'm just going to put a cable tie there. Temporary fix. Just to stop that from getting damaged. Basically it's that. Okay, so that's out of the way. So there you go. Right, so now we need to remove the fan. And we also need to remove the clutch from the water pump pulley at the back. So every, everything's layered, pretty much. So John is removing, so what we, we're, this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna remove this fan so from the clutch it. so we don't damage it, because we need to hold the back of the clutch or something, then Alan keep it, we'll tell you that in a minute. So this is a HW5. So what we've done, just clean the threads up a little bit, put a bit of the rust loosener in there, uh, run a pick round here, because obviously it's a bit grubby. So they come out nice and easy. We will show you something interesting. So bearing in mind this is a 2009, isn't it? 2009 uh, Triple One CDI. With the original water pump in. And like I said in previous, you know, we're doing this as like proactive maintenance. Now, so that just pops up. There's a lot of rubbish on this as well. All sorts of like, see all this stuff? Which isn't, isn't great. Uh, but Little tip, if you've Little got tip. these zip bags and they won't open up, do that with them. Little tip, keep everything organised right. when you're doing this. So John said earlier in the video, in the in a few minutes ago, he said that he spotted, he said behind it you can see it's, it's damp, wet. damp yeah. behind the water pump. So it's probably time to replace it anyway. So, so it looks like we've got that in time. So our next thing is to remove that. Obviously we've got to remove the drive belt as well. So we need a really big uh, thing which we'll find. What we'll do, we'll come back to you, we'll just get the right hex in there. And come, we'll come back to you back once to we've you. got that and then we'll show you show how you to, to yeah. show you how to get it off. Oh yeah, so... Taking the clutch off, aren't we? Yeah. And if you look behind it, there's a couple of bolts there, there's four bolts. You get a flathead screwdriver, this is how we've done it. And you see that shroud, that ring there, whatever you want to call it. Just wiggle that in there. And how we've done it, we found an old bit of pipe. Put that on there. It's leverage, aren't we? And then that's had a real good clean in there, and that is H6. H6, right? And and it was. And you need to push to the floor. So we're, we're going anti-clockwise because obviously the engine keeps it tight yeah. when it's spinning. So in the UK, so this is driver's side pushing to the floor. So we're going to the floor, just yeah. left basically. Yeah, to the floor. Yep. Yeah. And that really was. Obviously you could use an impact drive if you've got one, but, but no didn't take much to get it off, did it? And there we are. Now, that's off. Okay. It's got bearings in there as well. Yeah. So the next thing to get off is the um, pulley on the water pump. So basically the, the, the fan, so you've got, you've got, the, you've got the, the fan, the clutch, you've got the pulley, four bolts and onto the pump and then once we so obviously we have to take off the drive belt now but we'll show you what these are so we need to see if we can work out what these are while we're there you are not h7 not that all right what we'll do is we'll clean this up and then we'll tell you exactly what that is when we've worked that out so John's just found me the right uh, socket for that. It's a, uh, it's a T30. We couldn't really see it was Torx because it was so dirty. We cleaned out for pick and things. Make sure you take these off or loosen them up while you've still got the belt on so you've got some resistance. Yeah. Don't take the belt off. Then try, just they didn't off. take that much to take off, to so be perfectly honest. It's like easy peasy. So Come out quite easily. Bags for everything. Okay, so now we're removing the um, pulley from the water pump. So this is the new one, and as you can see, that's where the, the bolts go in, and it's got this edge, like that. So that means that this edge here, this metal edge, is not is not the pulley. So the pulley is actually slid over it. So I've cleaned it up with a bit of a rust uh, wheel on a drill wire brush, and I'm just going to use a bearing puller to pull it out. And John is. So you, you might be able to pry it off from somewhere, but we're just going to use tools that we've got. Should. That, that is coming off. off there. Yeah, Fix might need a little bit more. So as you, oh, it's coming off, hang on. Yeah. There you go. So that's it there. And um, basically it's just rust jacketed on there. And that's the reason why it didn't come that's off easy. Oh, so 
bearing puller. Yeah. Um, and clean all this up. Just a word of advice. If you're struggling, you get most of the stuff from uh, Alfred's. Amazon as well. Amazon sell everything you know, like if that. If you want some the same day, I was quite impressed how many tools Alfred's have actually got. Yeah. And apparently lifetime guarantee on that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we've used to get that. Yeah. So in order to get the pump off, it looks like we've got a load of Torx bolts, yeah. small ones and big ones. Um, we've got to take this pipe off here, the one that runs along there. We're just going to so that's clean these, the, clean all this up before trying to remove yeah, it. Yeah, we're replacing this. Replacing this, and this, as I said, these have got caps over yeah, them. Just, see that you you can hear that now. That's gone. Yeah, it's gone. So eventually that'll just collapse, and that pump doesn't look great. But what we'll do. When we take Sounds it off, a bit rough that does. You know what? This is water there. Look, it's a slow, it's a very slow drip, but it is dripping. Just bear in mind that your alternator's down here. Yeah. So, uh, we did I mean, you could probably cover it with something, but I just let it all dry out. We did say we were going to do something with that, but we haven't. Right. So, yeah, we'll clean all these bolts up and um, take this off as well. So we're actually going to remove the water pump and John's just got the sockets we need, they're all Torx. Just remove this pipe for the side. Uh, they're female Torx things and you need the 10 and the 12. There's a couple of big 12s on there. On there. The so the bolts are basically here, 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 here. That's not one, no. that's one, that's one and that's one. The reason why this is so oily is because we had a problem with the injectors. That's why there's stuff everywhere. That's another story. Yeah, that's another. That's for another. That's so, in another video. That one. This is a a bit of a leverage on it, so it does help, and this adjusts as well. So I think it's made by Draper. It's quite. Yeah, they're quite a good tool. That. So what I'm going to do is just loosen these off. There's one there. It's a big one. So they're coming off easy. So that means they're not torqued that much. What I might do is just loosen things up. And I'm guessing... I think there's big ones here, but we'll take these little ones out. Now, your new pump doesn't come with new bolts, so be very precious with these. And obviously we want to give everything Especially the surface that the new pump's going on. A very good clean. It's about um, quarter past one. Right, so we've never done this before. We started at half, say 10.30. It's quarter past one, so we're about just under three hours in. Yeah. They say it's about five, six hour job. And we are taking our time. We're not rushing it. We're not, we're not, we're not breaking things off, at least not yet. And we're doing yet. a video as well. And we're doing the video, so we're going to pause for each bit to do that as well. But hopefully this is uh, helpful. I've seen them and they're really good. The, the thing that I found is they didn't show some detail. Yeah, because it's got like, it's weird with this, because it's got all these different sized bolts so with us. do it, you just, even if you don't want to buy a set of these, you could probably just buy individuals and think, oh, I need that. So we'll get the water pump off and then we'll look at probably doing these... Because we are going to we're going to replace this pulley yeah. and this one, yeah. so we'll need to take them caps off and so work caps out. Caps come off, and they just have a Allen key. In, and there's twelve there. So we might as well show you what the sizes of, in case you're thinking about doing them as well. They do sound a bit rough though. That and they, they weren't a fortune then, were they? About Fifteen pound each, I think. Yeah. So we've removed all the water pump bolts, but there's one at the top right here, a little one, and uh, this. Has to be removed. Yeah. So to remove that, that is a T50. Yeah. That helps, and literally just. And there's just these little black covers on the front. Yeah. They just. Just get a little flat head screwdriver and just prise it off. Yeah. So we'll remove that. That's coming out nice and easy, but they're very rough. Yeah. They've had they've, it. they've they've had it. So in the next bit, we'll be showing you with the pump off. So that's that pulley on the top right removed, and John's just going to um, try and remove the water pump. See how easy that is. So I've got a pry bar. And I'm just going to try and lever it off. Yeah. Just have a little bit of water. So we've got a thing on there. Move the thing over a bit. It's just the gasket. Just making sure. Ah, oh, there's another one there. Ah. 
little like little tiny little torques. You didn't even see that one. Is that a big one or a little it's a small one? one? So it'll be interesting to see as this comes off. So persevere and watch this because we believe this to be the original pump by the state of it. Okay, so we've got a gasket that was there. All looks very nice and clean. Oh, it sounds a bit rough though. Ow. The bolts for the water pump that go through are really, really long. Sound the bearings sound rough on it. Let's just compare it to the new yeah. one. It's actually the bearings that go on these, and they, they destroy themselves. And it, the seal goes, then you get obviously leaking and heat and things. Know. This is a new one. Nice and smooth. You can you can't even hear anything with can't it. Can't hear any movement there at all. So that's the new one. Where is? Yeah. So that's on, that's on its way out, and I think yeah. the signs that you've got all this. I know we've let a bit of fluid out, but you've got all this damp and mess here. Yeah. It's starting to go. So. So worth replacing. Yeah, yeah that's definitely. The stern. That's the old one. There's a new one. Yeah, no sound yeah. at all, which you'd expect. And there's this seal here as well. So that needs to come away. So what we need to do here is give this a really good clean, now, put the seal on and bolt it back on. Don't use sandpaper on that. Just use something like uh, a green or a brown. Emery. No, yeah. not emery. Uh, no, like a scotchy pad, pad, yeah. yeah. With yeah. a bit of soap and things, whatever. Yeah. Right, so we're going to replace the um, drive belt tensioner. It's this one here. Already told you what the, that size is. And these little... Um, bolts are E10. Yeah, they're not. They're not. They are torques, but they're E10. Um, and the thing to do with this is to bring it round and then put like a pin in here, and then you can get to that bolt. Otherwise, this is this pulley's in the way. So you'd need that 17. Yeah. And you just put it on there. Put yeah. It there. Now we've locked it in with a little Allen key. Yeah, just to hold it out of the way. This locking pin, and uh, we need to remove this one here. Otherwise, you just cannot get to it. So while John removes that, I'll just say that we've given the whole water pump face a really good clean. About as much as we can get it, it's really smooth and I'm going to fit it in a minute. We are going to replace the tension as well though. We might as well if we're in this area doing other bits. They sound... What was that? That's the chalk gone in the... Uh... We're refitting the water pump. I'll just show you the torque settings. So for the smaller bolt it's 14 newton meters and for the slightly big ones it's 20 newton meters from the sources I've managed to get it from. The other thing I'd mention is with the big bolt, we're putting the big bolts in first. The big bolt here on the left is slightly longer than the rest of them. If you just put a smaller one in there it won't quite bite. If you think that thread's gone. It hasn't, you just haven't got the right bolt. There's in. a really long one that goes on it's the not left. Much, about 10 mil more. Yeah, but it does make a difference. That so that goes in there. Yeah. And then obviously we'll put all the little ones in, we'll just get all the big ones in to yeah. keep it there. I've put a little one in there just to line it up. And we have put we've put the gasket on and we've also put a little bit of uh, what we used silicon gasket yeah so it comes with a gasket we haven't used the um black one that was in it because it's not for that but the um what's that stuff called the gasket that's like composite we've used and we've used a little bit of this on it um each side just to make sure that it doesn't actually leak so we'll do these up these are set at 20 aren't they yeah So 
So 20 newton meters for the big ones, 14 newton meters for the small ones. It's as easy as that. And then what you want to do is just let this all just go off. Go off. If you've put a little bit of thing on it as well, just definitely let it go off before filling it up. And it's just a case of reassembling it pretty yeah, much. Interesting thing, just in case you're interested, this had what we believe to be blue coolant in it. It could have been green. So I've been to a company called Bennett's. They've assured me it takes green coolant. Mercedes, it's got an extra year on it. Three and different coolant are for different types of engine basically. That's what it's for. Anyway, I hope that helps out. So the pump's on and all talked up. I'm just going to let the bits dry on it. The next job to do is to replace the thermostat. Um, this is what it looks like. There's two pipes at the back. That's blanked off and has that little sensor. It sits something like that. So we've got to get some bits out of the way. You've got your fuel rail sensor there. Sort of clip on the side, a few bits and bobs. Got to take Jubilee clip off that, Jubilee clip off this. New thermostats in, um, new pumps on, new pulley, new pulley, new pulley, there, new pulley. Um, These are about £15 pound each. each, that one's about 20 to 30 deflection yeah, this pulley. Deflection pulley, this was quite difficult to get. Uh, we weren't going to replace this, so just a word of warning, but because it looked alright, but when we took it off, it rat rattled like a, a good one. It sounded it quite rough, it, yeah. It wasn't particularly good. Oh, we it was like a uh, wobbly front wheel on a cycle. So it doesn't sound that great. So you need to get on it, and there's not a lot of stock of these. So if you find one, Come uh, if you find one, grab it and just put a new one on. How much was this? 33 about 30 quid. odd quid, yeah. Yeah, so um, it's about to do it yourself. About 250 quid. Is there anything you want to say about the water pump, uh, the the thermostat? About uh, anything? So it's got these are the hoses. The only <coughs> it came with a rubber gasket. The only difficult thing was getting the uh, hex bolt in there. Um, that was a T30, and you just need plenty of light. It's down yeah. there, top one. So there's one there, one at the so, bottom right, one at the bottom so left. So to get that one there, you slide in there. And it's quite easy. We did have to take off the fuel because that clamps off um, the bottom one. Once all the pipes are off, you can get to them quite easy. Just persevere with it. Yeah, we did have to take the fuel rail yeah. pressure switch off as well. Yeah, apart from that, it was quite an easy, um, easy job. Fix. You might find these are a little bit stiff coming off. Uh, just be a bit careful with your thing there. Make sure you got that back in. But apart from that, it was fine. It, um, what brand was it? it was, uh, oh, these these um, Jubilee clips are a little um, six mil. Six mil, some are six mil, some yeah. are eight. Uh, the brand is, I think it was Schaefer. The band is Inner. Yeah. Uh, for all of the stuff uh, we fitted. It was all the perfect fit. The only thing that I found on the water pump, the only thing was a uh, bolt going in here for the pulley. Um, not the best of fits to start with. So I put a bit of lubricant on it and just threaded it in slowly, so just be aware of that. But apart from that, it was fine. Right, so uh, next morning with this Vito, just popped all the bumper back on and everything. That's straightforward enough, reverse. Um, this system, it's a Vito van W639, takes nine litres. This is the antifreeze that I used. Just so you know, it's concentrate, so water it down is what you want, preferably with distilled water, we did 50-50. Uh, this is, uh, we're in March 2024 and it was £24 for this from a lovely company called Bennett's, so they're good car parts people. Uh, put it all back together, the only problem we had a uh, little bit of air in the system because we did the thermostat and the water pump and we had no heating in the cab, so I'm, I'm going to share this with you. So this is what we did, we literally, we removed the lid off there, I'm going to take it off and started the van up and let it warm up a little bit, say five ten minutes. And then, what I did, I sort of revved it for say a couple of minutes at 20,000 revs just to get that water pump flying. 22,000, yeah, 2000, yep. yeah, sorry. And uh, see this pipe here, just give it a few. And if you look over at you the squeeze that, you can see it 
yeah. And it seemed, and, and a couple of times, um, I've seen this referred to as burping the cooling You had system. the cap off it, didn't you? Yeah, uh, it, it did shoot up and you could see some air coming out. And within about five or ten minutes, that fixed the problem and we had heating in the cab, so. But it's self, it's self. So um, it's supposed to be self bleeding Yeah, so you but, don't need to do too much, but. Uh, that was just a way of accelerating the process more than anything. Um, <coughs> I'd just say the dif difficulty level of this job. The hardest bit was literally taking those uh, headlight connectors off. Because they were on there for so long. Yeah, yeah, if you take your time with this, it's fairly straightforward. Just make sure you've got all the tools. Like I say, just go through our video and, and, and write them down what you need. And um, if it was to go in the garage, probably four or five hours. Because if you're taking bolts out, you're taking bolts out, etc. Uh, it took us <coughs> a day, but we're doing the video and this morning popped the, all the, the bumper on. So if you're novice, never done this before like we are, we're not mechanics, um, then it probably took us about eight or nine hours, I would say. We took our time to. though, didn't we? Yeah. If we were doing it again. Um, now, if you needed to replace the alternator, it's the same process of taking everything off. It'd be a lot easier to do it with everything we off. just take everything off again, because it, it's so much easier and access is in there. And the alternator is lifts down. Yeah, the alternator's literally down there. Down there. So it's very difficult. Did to you get mention them. how much coolant we put in there? Yeah, nine litres. Nine litres, okay. Um, yeah. but, and the coolant you apparently require is green. There are various colours, but it's green for the veto that I've been assured. Sometimes, a word of warning as well. See there, it, it looks blue. Yeah. Let's just have that off. And if it's been in a while, it'll definitely look blue. So it looks blue. There's a green in there though. Yeah, so you might look at that and go, oh, it's blue, but it's green. So bear that in mind. And it's to do with how it reacts with the engine and what the engine's made out. So it's quite important that you get the green stuff. This stuff here is good because it works with uh, ferrous, e.g. iron and alloy, so it's good for both. Yeah. Um, that works with both types of engines. Yeah, and this, it's a brand, I've heard of them. Granville, never, yeah. I've never used this before, but I've heard of them over the years, yeah. so it's a good product. So yeah, um, and it definitely needed doing, and if you've got a 2009 um, Vito van or something around that or, or earlier, do your water pump. This is an OM646 engine, so it should be a, applicable to other vehicles with the same yeah. engine in it. Yeah, I'd say uh, our water pump, I'm just saying again, hadn't failed, but if it does fail on these because the amount of work to get to it, it's a tow job. And it's a nightmare whereas if you do it now you can fix it yourself and pricing on these water pumps again march 2024 i think we paid about 80 pound for ours you can get them cheaper and you can get them more expensive so it's entirely up to you it's entirely up to you what parts you want to fit yeah um <coughs> i guess a garage it'd be a few hundred quid to have this stuff but i've got the premises and their equipment and insurances and that so it's, it's a project for a weekend if you wanted to do one i guess anyway thanks for watching <clears throat> and we always appreciate a thumbs up because we're a small channel and it does help us along quite a bit and uh, if you subscribe we're going to be doing a few more videos probably the use of the van etc anyway thanks for watching